Hello students. Welcome to e-lecture of production and operations management. This is a common paper to MBA first years. This is for 100 marks. In today's session, you are going to learn the concept of production and operations management. What is the difference between production and operation? What is production system? Different types of production system. What is the nature of production and operations management? Scope and functions of operation management. Let me share you a PPT which can help you to understand better. Learning objectives of today's session, whatever I said now. Production and operations management. Production. The use of resources such as workers and machinery to convert materials into finished goods and services. Production is nothing but conversion of raw materials into final product production and operations management is defined as the process of overseeing the production process by managing the people and machinery that convert materials and resources into finished goods and services inputs conversion process outputs here in outputs you are seeing two aspects goods services if you produce goods we call that as production if you produce services we call that as operations production versus operation the transformation process of inputs into form of output thereby adding value to some entity if that output may be a product or service, how you have seen in the last diagram. If it is a product centric, then it is known as production. If it is service centric, then that is known as operation. Hope you understood the difference between production and operation. Historical evolution of production and operations management for over two centuries operations and production management has been recognized as an important factor in country's economic growth it's obvious right based on the production and operations management country's economic growth depends if productivity and production is good sales and profits will be fine with that Economic growth trajectory shows the status of country's economy. The traditional view of manufacturing management began in 18th century when Adam Smith recognized the economic benefits of specialization of labor. He recommended breaking of jobs down into subtasks and recognizes workers to specialize the tasks in which they would become highly skilled and efficient. Adam Smith. Hope you read about Adam Smith in first semester. In the concept of management gurus. Adam Smith is a Scottish philosopher, author, advocated the importance of economy to the organization and society He's also known as father of economics his contribution division of labor is the base for today's job specialization 
what exactly we are enjoying now as a specialized works is the hard work of M. Smith. In the early 20th century, F. W. Taylor implemented Smith theories and developed scientific management. As you're all well known, scientific management theory is a theory which applies science to the engineering of processes to management. One can see problem solving through scientific methods with the help of this scientific management theory. From then till 1930, many techniques were developed prevailing the traditional view. Here you can see the contribution of contributors in the aspects of production and operational management. Among those, you are renowned and will be repeat in your next units. Specialization of labor in manufacturing, Adam Smith, that is division of labor. Scientific management, time study and work study developed dividing planning and doing of work by frederick w taylor taylor is the is an taylor was an american scientist who contributed for industrial efficiency he introduced differential price Motion of study of jobs by Gilbert, scheduling techniques for employees by Henry L. Grant, Elton Mayo. He contributed to human relations with his experiment Hathron. Organizational behavior, continued study of people at work, comments, quality and productivity applications from Japan. Even today, we are using CQM, total quality management, quality concepts of Japanese. All the above said contributions were concise into five different headings like this. At the era of industrial revolution, at the age of scientific management, at the time of human relations movements, that is from 1920 to 60s, decision models at 1960s to 70s, finally, influence of Japanese manufacturers till today, still dated, we are using Japanese models, heat production, just-in-time production, quality revolution, continual improvement, 